I'm Shikha and my colleague Vikas. Hi. And uh, we are from Medimojo. So uh, I'll begin with the differentiation where Medimojo is placed. So you might have seen a lot of electronic record management uh, providers uh, of late, and uh, plenty of them are startups. But what we see is that images are uh, stored in a digital format, and it stays as an image. We have moved beyond that. We have our own algorithms where we do real-time image processing and machine learning to make sense of the data that resides inside the image. And once you have the data, we provide a lot of analytics around that. So if you have 100 records over the platform, the machine is able to read and plot those data as per dates, as per you know different timelines and history. So an individual don't have to flip over the images to understand what's really happening. And it gets extremely easy for a doctor to view those records, you know, they don't have to see it. So if it's a heart doctor and he wants to understand how the kidney function has moved, he just has to put those lipid profile or sodium and say that he wants to check it from this day to this date, he gets a plotted graph. I have been tending to my mother who's a stroke patient for four years and I realized that patients who has huge amount of hard copy of the records available to them, they struggle at three different things, to store them safely, to carry them around whenever they are going to see the doctor and to make sense of so much of health data. Medimojo is solving typically those type of problem where people have gathered so much of health data when they move from one doctor to the other, one lab to the other or one hospital to the other. Medimojo as a product has global appeal, especially in countries where you don't have centralized healthcare system. And India provides the, one of the best opportunity for us to get into this and solve certain problem. Let me just give you a few pointers from India, uh, Indian healthcare system to understand how relevant our product is. Close to 2 billion hard copies are generated over a year's time. 70% of interstate medical tourism that I say is only for follow-up consulting, which can be reduced drastically if the records are shared over the platform with complete history. I'm not talking about one record sharing over the WhatsApp. A doctor may not remember complete history. So unless a complete history is shared, you can't solve this problem. And India don't have a centralized system Everybody is fragmented, all the data is fragmented, all the hospitals are fragmented. So bringing them together is one of the biggest challenge. We launched our public beta in January this year. We already have close to 35,000 users on our platform with 125,000 health records that we have already digitized as on date. Coming back to the team, which I say that which is one of our strongest. Uh, between me and Vikas, I think we understand the health data like nobody else. I'm a PhD from IIT Kanpur and I have run a health data an analytics company only for pharmaceuticals for close to six years. And all the large pharma brands are my clients when I was doing that. And then I moved into digital space. Vikas is having 15 years of work ex in uh, medical insurance sector. So between two of us, we have played around with healthcare and data throughout. We are asking for two CR as a valuation of uh, six year. At the valuation of six years? Six. Free money. So you're giving one third of the company? Yeah. You are giving one third of the company? No, no pre money six. six. Oh, pre money six. Yeah. So we're talking about 25 percent. 20, 25 percent. How do you monetize this? Corporates, uh, health service providers, and schools, these are the three segments that we are currently working with to generate revenue out of these engagements. So, uh, so it's basically it the delivery is done to the uh, user. The final beneficiary or the is the user, the patient. but the yeah, patient. patient. Right. Okay. The, the final is the user, but it's delivered through uh, B2B. So who pays you? The B2B. So corporates would pay us, schools pay us, and, and uh, no, no, why would service pay you? Which corporate will pay you? You're talking about the insurance companies. No, not insurance companies, corporates like Can we large corporate houses. Yeah. So we why don't want to take the names. We don't want to take names as of now. So okay, that's ABC, let's say. Okay. But why would so, they pay for it? So an ABC corporate would benefit in terms of they have a wellness program that they run and which is pretty significant. And because of our intervention, the the management of health data and building analytics on that, which oh. HR has a real-time dashboard available and monitoring or tracking the activities, which, which makes the employee set move upwards towards from being a compromised health to better health situation. Oh. So, so HR is able program. to track the wellness. So whatever uh, money has been spent on wellness is properly tracked and the return on investment is like tracked over a period of time. No, no, so, no. so we are using two technology at this point in time, which is like given to the uh, employees through HR and HR gets a, a real time dashboard to track what is really happening over are the period of time. Are you saying HR pays a certain amount of money every month and okay, because okay. they pay that money, they have access to the employees' healthcare records? Not, not all not, the healthcare not all records. records. So whatever uh, uh, is done over the premise in terms of uh, 
health benefits, whatever it they are giving, and it's always in the analytic analytics format. So it's not like an individual health record is compromised and given it to for somebody to see. So HR is able to see that okay, in this department, this age group, this gender group, this is what is happening, and I can do a better intervention with that. So I, individual healthcare is never uh, record is how never much, compromised. How much do they pay per per employee per month? Per month, it's like yearly uh, long thousand uh, five hundred. 1500 per, per employee per employee. per employee that's a lot you mentioned you've got 125000 records records yeah and where did these come from okay so uh, initially when we started uh, we wanted to do the proof of concept so close to 15000 we have done on ground standing outside uh, labs medical centers and hospitals and we go and meet individual people which was very encouraging that 36 percent of people have gone back and registered their family as well and they have uploaded the records themselves let's assume you have a million data points okay yeah. what would you how would you use the data okay, to so, add value yeah so that's that is the key that that we are looking at so a slice and dice of the data in terms of understanding india's healthcare system so today if you want to understand what's really happening in noida who's paying for this data pharma companies are they ready to pay today? Absolutely, because I have, uh, that's what I said, you know, my own experience of uh, doing data collection for them and I understand the amount of data that they require from the ground. They just don't have any clue at the primary level what is happening. Till the secondary level, they know what is happening, but exactly on the ground. So I used to do data collection with doctors, patients, chemists. And that data collection, because it's feet on street, it's very limited. But how is this data going to come to you? Because unless pharmacies are documenting it, how do you get it? So prescription and report. So it's like, you know, so when as an individual, I'm uploading my prescription, I'm uploading my bills, I'm uploading my records, you know, so it's like, you know, I go to any lab, so what tests are done. So I'm uploading multiple set of data on the platform. Why? Why would somebody do that? People are doing, that's what, you know, I, I, I started, you know, somebody who struggles with so much of hard copies and you don't know how to manage them, you know, in terms of digital formats. So it's like, you know, having a value addition for individuals to manage their own okay, individual what does your retention data look like you've got 35000 people who are on your platform yeah. you've acquired ever in the last 30 days how many of them logged in i mean i would say close to another 32 percent have logged in and uploaded some more records and because you know the moment they are going people are doing it i mean the traction has been pretty decent in terms of i mean we we ourselves are not able to go on ground and do b2c so activities you don't much. expect the customer to ever pay for it it's not a b2c model ever no we want to keep it uh, no i understood so customer yeah. will always be free yeah. and you will encourage individuals to upload data so yeah. that you can use that data and uh, do something with Perfect. the corporates and take and benefit tell me who is your cto yeah. Who's your CTO? Okay, so we hired a CTO because between two of us, we are is not... Is he not a co-founder? We really are taking... No, we hired a CTO. Okay, so we are giving because you a, mentioned a something chance. very interesting a few minutes back. You said you've built technology that's very good at extracting intel or extracting data out of yeah. offline reports yeah. and turning it into intelligence. Yeah. Right? I think that's where your value really lies. Absolutely. There's a lot of companies globally working on extracting, you know, some of it is called OCR, other is called image recognition and so on and so forth. And you're saying you've built all that in-house? Yes, we did. Wouldn't, if that really works better than any of the technologies out there, wouldn't you want to leverage that no. horizontally as opposed to looking at it vertically? Okay, so the so the starting point was Google API. Now, there's a basic problem ah, in that. Okay, so you're using third-party APIs. Basic is Google API Understood. and then we built. The, Understood. The biggest challenge what we had, Delhi alone has 700 labs and each lab format has... No, no, I'm with you now. I was just yeah. trying to understand if you build the technology ground no. up or you're no. using third-party APIs. Okay, using third-party APIs and you are trying to derive intelligence out of this. It seems to me your biggest problem is going to be user inertia. Even if I use it once, getting me to use it over and over again is going to be very hard. Yeah. I think what you're doing is very good work in the right direction. I think the part that you've hit upon, which is using Google APIs or any other third-party APIs to build this intelligence layer around the data and reports, I think that's a gold mine. However, it's not going, and you could sell subscriptions to that, right? If you build very powerful sort of conversion uh, APIs or technology, you could sell subscription to every me medical practitioner out there. Having said that though, that's not going to happen until there is legislation that enforces digitization of medical records, in my view. And so I'm going to pass on this, but I think you're in the right direction. You should work with government to try to enforce this legislation. That's going to be your best bet. So, so the idea is how can we take out patterns and trends from it? 
to be able to treat people better. That's the final yeah. goal. That's the that's goal, the, goal yeah. That's the final goal, yeah. right? Because I'll tell you today, whether it's in India or in the US, sure. nobody nobody actually prints clinical outcomes. Correct, like For correct. example, you go for an appendicitis surgery, correct. any hospital, you'll never know how many patients in that hospital had a successful appendicitis yeah. surgery. Yeah. Nobody knows, nobody that's tries. True. Correct. That's the direction of healthcare in the future, right? Sure. I think your valuation is outrageous. I think for an organization which is pre-revenue, uh, I think eight crores is in my mind ridiculous. What I'm willing to do is willing to put about 75 lakhs um, for 33% in the company. Guys, I'll pass this one. Yeah. I also feel I think Amira can add a lot more value to this business. Uh, this is outside of my space, I would like to pass. In my case, uh, you know, I think uh, Amira will definitely benefit from it and, and I want her to benefit from it in some way. And, uh, you guys, and you guys, and, and you guys too. Get, but I've had this chronic disease thing in my family and I went through four uh, the best specialty hospitals in Gurgaon. And I can tell you this whole sharing of data is a, is a, is a kind of a myth there. Totally. The, all four private hospitals are kind of fighting each other. I really had the worst time, a heroic time where they're all just fighting. They don't like to share the data. If I get a report from one hospital to the other, they don't want to look at it. Everything is like a machine. It's a factory out there. They just want to print more lab reports. They want to keep doing more reports. So you're talking about creating a national kind of a, you know, like a database. I, I, I feel the private hospitals won't even do it. No, I don't have an offer to her. So I think, I'm going to pass, yeah. uh, you know, I, I like what you guys are doing, but uh, I don't think I can add any value to what you're doing other than some money. And I think Amira is the best person to really add value to your business. So I'll let it pass. So you've got one offer on the table and I think it's a great offer. We'd love to have you on board, definitely. But uh, equity ask is slightly high at this point in time for both of us to part with. Guys, I think you, in respect of equity, still we would like to have that actually. So, uh, is there a counter is... offer or are you saying no? No, it's no. a counter offer. Counter offer. So, what's a counter offer? 20%. For 75 lakhs? Yeah. That sorry. values it at 3.5 crores. 3. Three. Uh, I'm sorry, guys, Three. I actually don't believe that at this point uh, I want to move from my offer. Uh, not because I want to shortchange you, because that's not my interest. My interest is for you to make money, for you to add value, for you to grow. Uh, but this is what I believe is the more than fair value, value at this point. And I also know what I'm going to bring to the table. Right. Guys, I think you're doing a great job and yes, so, you're so, trying very hard. So you guys decide. You guys you decide. Say, what do you say? I think it's a very fair thing. You should think of long term. You're building a business. Yeah. Guys, Absolutely. money you know, is not yeah, the only issue. Term. You're making a mistake. Don't walk believe away from money and Amira. What are you doing? No, no. Um, Amina, definitely, we don't want to walk away from Amina. Definitely. So that decide, is decide quickly. That is definitely there. But guys, look, you have to feel good about whatever you do. Yeah, yeah. yeah so don't course. make a decision under any pressure. There are no yeah. mistakes. There are always many paths. Uh, and if not this, there'll be you another one. one. So, so you stick to whatever. Uh, I, I'm going to stick to what I'm or what I'm to Because I feel it's more than fair. I'll take it. So Great. Congratulations. Well done. I think that we're finally able to get investment approval from one of the uh, panelists there. And the best part is having uh, Amira on our panel as investor. That will help us grow this company in an exceedingly fast manner because she comes with the right experience, the right kind of background for us to guide us through this journey of making it into a large value company and be the, the most primary health data focused organization serving the health community in India. And I think if we can create reports uh, that can help the government, that can help doctors to, like I said, just get better clinical outcomes. I mean, our goal has always been pursuing excellence in some yeah. form. Nobody